This video will help explain what gravity and inertia are. These are very important to know to fully understand how orbits work. It is these two things working together that help keep our planets and moons in a constant and predictable pattern around the sun and planets. You'll want to be filling out your notes as you watch this video. So remember, as you're filling out your notes and watching this video, anything in red is going to be especially important and uh, the things that you are going to need to write down. So the theory of gravity and the three laws of motion were both developed by Isaac Newton. Remember that story of the apple falling on the guy's head and him discovering gravity in that moment? Uh, yeah, that's this guy. Uh, he's not the reason that Fig Newtons are called Fig Newtons, though. Those are named after a town in Massachusetts. Fun fact of the day. So on Earth, gravity is the force that attracts us toward the center of the Earth so that we don't fly away out into space. We say it pulls us down, but really it just pulls us towards the center, since in outer space there is really no up or down. Remember this question from the practice MCA test? You should have answered with all the arrows pointing towards the ground, because the center of the Earth just happens to be down. When we think of gravity in the context of outer space, though, we can't just say it pulls us down, because like I just said earlier, there is no up or down in outer space. Gravity acts on all matter in the universe. Every single thing has gravity. So this means in addition to things like the sun and the earth, like you might traditionally think of having gravity, both you and I have gravity, your iPad has gravity, the table has gravity, everything has gravity. Any two objects in the universe have gravity and will attract each other. But just how much the objects attract each other depend on the mass and the distance between them. So you'll notice that you are more attracted to the Earth than your iPad because the Earth happens to have a larger mass than your iPad. And you are pulled more toward the Earth than Jupiter because you are closer to Earth. So everything is attracted to everything else, but the strength of attraction can vary. Remember, this is not like a middle school kind of attraction, though. When we say attraction, we mean more of a pull. It's a force. Um, but I've included a great pickup line just in case you are attracted to someone and want to uh, pick up a science nerd. So now here's the question that I always get. Is there gravity on the moon? The answer to that is yes. Remember, I just said that gravity acts on everything, so the moon is included in that. The next question then is why isn't it as strong as on Earth? If you've seen videos of astronauts on the moon, you've seen them bounce around instead of just walking normally like they do on Earth. So clearly, it's not as strong as Earth. But why? The answer is because the moon is smaller than Earth. It is about one-fourth the size of the Earth, so gravity is much weaker. Remember, I said the force of gravity depends on mass and distance. So there's actually a way to calculate gravity, but it involves doing a bit of math. You can see the equation there. And since I'm not a math teacher, and I'm more focused on the scientific concepts, you are not going to have to solve any math equations. If you look at this, though, you'll see that gravity, to find gravity, you just need to add the gravitational constant, which is that long number at the bottom, it's g. Um, so they give you that value, and then you just have to add that to the masses of the two objects, and then divide all that by the distance between the objects. So it's not that complicated, but it does involve doing some math. So we're going to look at a few examples comparing mass and distance with different objects. Uh, so our first example is going to be me standing on the surface of the Earth. Okay, so the two objects are me and the Earth. Our distance is, that's the distance from me to the center of the Earth. Next set of objects is going to be me, uh, but this time I'm going to be orbiting the Earth. So my distance is actually as far away as the moon is. So imagine me going around the Earth like where the moon is. Third set is going to be the moon and the Earth at their normal distance, so where we see the moon every night. And the fourth set is the moon and the Earth, but this time the moon is going to be two times as far away. Okay, so we're going to see how these compare. What I want you to do is in your notes, either circle or star, uh, do, do something to indicate which set of objects you think is going to have the strongest gravitational force. So which one has the strongest pull of gravity between the two objects. All right, now that you've made your prediction, I'm going to reveal what the actual answers are. Uh, so 
when we do the calculation, so plugging all this information into the equation that I showed you before, we find out that the force of gravity between me and the Earth, when I'm just standing on the surface, is going to be 587.5 newtons. So we measure gravity uh, with newtons. It's a measurement of force, of course, named after Isaac Newton. Uh, next one. So me orbiting the Earth about where the moon is, that force of gravity is going to be about 0 0.172 newtons. So right now it looks like me on the surface of the Earth has a higher gravity than me orbiting the Earth, which kind of makes sense. I'm pulled closer to the, or I'm pulled stronger to the surface of the Earth when I'm standing on it versus when I'm farther away. Next, the moon and the Earth. Uh, at their normal distance, we find out that the force of gravity is 2.2 one three four times 10 to the 20th so if you don't know scientific notation that is two followed by like 20 zeros so it's a fairly large number so the gravity force is oh that's newtons the gravity force is really really big now the moon and the earth twice as far as they usually are will be 4.9 8 times 10 to the 19th newtons. So it looks like from these calculations that the strongest force of gravity is between the moon and the earth at their normal distance. So at this point what I would like you to do is go into Schoology and find the gravity interactive link. This goes along with page four of your notes. I would like you to do this part first before moving on to the next section of your notes. So when you open the link, this is what it should look like. Please do not move anything yet. Uh, really just read the directions in your notes and from there you should be able to figure out what to do. For the first section, you are testing the effects of distance on gravity. So you need to keep the mass of the moon and the planet the same. So don't touch the slider bars at all. And just move the moon and the planet apart according to the table. So if it says one box apart, just move them so there's one box in between. If it's three boxes apart, put three boxes in between them. And so on. You need to record the force and then eventually graph all of the data. In this next section, you need to keep the planet and the moon apart at five boxes the entire time, keep the moon mass at 30 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms, and this time you're just moving the mass of the planet, so you're only moving the one slider bar. Again, record the force and then graph your data. So after doing the interactive activity and graphing your data, you should have found that as the mass gets greater, gravity should start to increase. Therefore, with a smaller mass, the force of gravity is going to be smaller, or it decreases. When objects are far away from each other, you should have seen that the force of gravity decreases, or is smaller. And as objects get closer, you should have seen that the force of gravity increases, or it is larger. So the next section of our notes is about inertia. It's the first law of motion. So please make sure that you are still writing in your notes. There's a small section about inertia. Um, this first law says that an object in motion tends to stay in motion at the same speed and in the same direction unless it is disturbed by an unbalanced force. So that's pretty scientific sounding. Let me give you an example. Picture, if you will, Miss Smetna skating in ice skates on the ice. I am very very not graceful. So when I get skating, uh, I, I get some speed, I'm going in one straight line because I can't really turn at all, and I'm gonna keep going in that same direction, probably at the same speed, until I hit something. So maybe that's the edge of the rink, maybe that's a small child, hopefully not, uh, but I'm gonna keep going same speed, same direction, because I can't really stop. So in this case, an unbalanced force is going to be this thing that stops me. That would be like the edge of the ice skating rink. It might be the small child. Or it could just be uh, that the ice eventually kind of slows me down and that there's air resistance. Now, 
that first law of motion also says an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. This law really just says that things are going to keep doing what they're already doing. So I just gave you a few examples of unbalanced forces. Here's a few more. So all of these unbalanced forces are going to be things that act on objects in motion uh, on Earth. So friction, air resistance, gravity, and other obstacles are going to slow things or stop things. Uh, these things don't happen out in outer space, though, which is why anything that we're in, that's in motion in outer space is going to stay in motion. Anything at rest in outer space is going to stay at rest because we don't have these forces in outer space. This is also the reason why you should wear your seatbelt because the car and you are traveling at the same speed, uh, but when the car hits something, like our unbalanced force, like an obstacle, you are going to go flying because there's nothing to stop you. You are still in motion. You're going to stay in motion. Uh, so it's a really good idea to wear a seatbelt when you're in the car. This is also the reason that you feel your body leaning the opposite way the car moves as you turn sharply. So if you've ever been in the car, like especially like in the back seat or on a bus where you're kind of tightly packed, you kind of tend to lean into people on accident. It's because you are moving at the same speed, the same direction as the car, but as soon as the car changes direction, you are still going at the same speed in the same direction that the car was. So your body's going to want to keep going the way it was going, uh, whereas the car is kind of moving in the other way. So your body tends to bump into the person next to you. This is also the reason that you feel your stomach kind of drop on a roller coaster. Your body is going one direction, the roller coaster it has moved directions or has changed direction and now your stomach is in a different place than the roller coaster is. So basically what it boils down to is inertia is laziness. Things want to do what they're already doing. If they're at rest, they're going to stay that way unless a force acts upon them. Like when you're laying on the couch and watching Netflix, you're going to stay there until some force, maybe your parent, maybe you're hungry, etc., makes you get up. Similarly, if something is moving, the tendency is for it to keep moving until something stops it. So inertia is laziness and gravity is attraction, eighth graders' favorite topics. To learn more about inertia, please go to Schoology and watch the video that is posted. And the very last thing we need to talk about is really the reason for this uh video. How do gravity and inertia work together to keep things in orbit? That's what we've been talking about is orbits. So we've got here an example of a planet and a moon. It happens to be Earth and our moon. Uh, and I'm going to draw in the force of gravity. So gravity is pulling the moon towards the Earth. So I'll write gravity. Then we know that the moon also has inertia. The moon is moving. It's going this way. So write down inertia. These two things are working together and the result of these two things pulling in kind of opposite directions is an orbit. So what we do is we see the moon going around the earth in this orbit. This is also obviously why the planets go around the sun. So the earth also has inertia it is traveling at the same speed in the same direction, but it, the sun's gravity is pulling it towards the sun. So the Earth also has a circular orbit for this same reason.